This is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time! Presenting the champion of the world, Wham Bam and Yo, it's your boy Wham Bam, and it's another Wham Bam Wednesday, and we're here with an epic episode today. We got the UFC contender fighter here in the house today, and let me tell you what, it's gonna be awesome. You don't wanna miss it, but before we get there, I got to ask you, as always, the show is free. And all we ask you give us a little bit of love and subscribe. You know, just go out there, hit the subscribe button, hit the little alert button so you get all the alerts for every single new podcast that we do every single week and show a little bit of love. Share it, like it, let everybody know about it. Because you know what? Even if this episode you don't like, which I know you are, I promise you the other episodes, there's going to be something that you want to enjoy. But today's episode I have with us here today just recently off the show, the, the UFC contender show where they're looking for, for champions, for new UFC contracts. Torres, the Punisher, Finney is in the house. Torres, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great today, Phil. Great to be here, man. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Absolutely, man. Man, I love it. I feel like a pro myself. I got these belts here, man. <laughs> man, you must put some hard-earned work into these. Yeah, man, some good old hard, like, you know, good, good little training sessions, a lot of a lot of hard work and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, man. So it's been it's been grinding. A lot of grinding. Still grinding. That's so. right. Still grinding. Just getting started by the sounds yes, of it. Just getting okay. started. We're, we're going to get to there. So tell me real quick, you know, a little bit. I know you're a Georgia boy, right? Mm -hmm. Born and raised in Macon, Georgia? Macon, Georgia. Yeah, man. I'm down there, right there in middle of Georgia. Went to uh, Jones County High School. Uh, Jones County is, you know, purple and gold where I'm from. I wrestled there, played football there, and um, was blessed to be a two-time state champion wrestler. Uh, 195. I was going to say, what weight class were you? Yeah, 195. You look like 260, man. I mean, <laughs> them <laughs> arms on you and stuff, they're just freaking humongous. <laughs> they you always know? say that, man. <laughs> Dude, everybody always thought I was like at least 220 or more, and I'm like, no, I'm 195, so... Yeah, I was able is it to the height? Is the height thing keeps you down a little bit? I think the ratio of the height and the weight, you know, <laughs> I think I think that with compacted, yeah. it makes a difference. Then, you know, I have the components of a tall man. Uh -huh. I, you know, I wear like a size 13 shoe. Wow. I got long arms. My my reach, you see in the contender yeah, series, yeah. was 75 and a half. Right. My arm is longer than most guys I don't fight. Be coming on. Don't be heavy with that reach, <laughs> man. You got to be careful over there. Yeah, man. And then, <laughs> and then after that, I mean, you know, like, you just really look like muscular and big and it's very deceptive, you know, especially when I go against a lot of guys, but I do have a lot of good components yeah. that I feel like help me not only in fighting, but also in any other sport I played. You know, let's, let's start back growing up. I mean, were you, do you have any brothers or siblings? I do. I do. I mean, I are have. Are they big? They jacked like you too? Or, you know, no, no. genetics or See, what? I'm the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got three sisters and uh, uh, three brothers actually. So, gotcha. um, yeah, so they're, they're, uh, I've, I've, I've never been the oldest. I'm like the more muscular one. Yeah. Um, I say this story started when I was in high school I was uh I broke my ankle uh, I, I wrestled in ninth grade I broke my ankle I was wrestling around 138 to 145 between uh -huh. those two weight classes and when I broke my ankle you know I had to have surgery and I laid in bed and all I did was roll out of bed with one foot up and I would just do push-ups really the first thing I did when I woke out of cert when I woke up from surgery I saw on TV was the Herschel Walker documentary yes and yes. that just instilled in me and my dad was a big push-up guy. My granddad would have contests between me and my sister. Uh, whoever do the most push-up, you win twenty dollars. And it's crazy. <laughs> Y'all might think this is wild, but I never this one instance I did a hundred straight. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay, I got that twenty bucks. That's easy money. She did a hundred and four straight. Oh and beat me. Oh. And I said I'd never lose another push-up contest again. <laughs> I haven't, you know, I'm down I'm down to do push-ups. Wait literally. a second here. Don't let with, me get loose I'm, now. I'm down to go down with anybody <laughs> on push-ups. But um yeah, man, I just did so many push-ups and I swear in like four months, I went from like 138 to like 182. Dang. In the span, I just gained a lot of weight. I was eating and doing nothing but push-ups, and then you continue to get better at working out. And you know, it's so crazy it. because it's like the easiest exercise to be able to do. Anybody can do it, right? Anybody sure. at home can do it. These kids can do it. I, you know, obviously coaching a lot of kids. You should always tell them, you know, do push-ups. I tell my son, 100 push-ups a day. Just I don't care if it sets a 20, right. five times. Every time you go to the bathroom, do 20 push-ups. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're gonna go four or five times a day. So just do something to keep yourself active. But for some reason, it's boring to them. They, they, they don't like it. it's boring, but when they start seeing them guns pop out, I know. Yeah, we you know? all like that pump. That's so right. I don't know why, you know, we all like to feel that pump. You know, you touch it, like, okay, yeah, yeah, I like that, you know. So 
maybe just because and plus it was instilled in me from my family you know my granddad my dad my uncle um those guys very very they love to work out they mm-hmm. love to train they love to run and they just instilled that into me you know it was always about being the best you can possibly be you know never settling and they always push me and I think that's where my work had to come from you know we didn't I would tell people I would go do wrestling tournaments and I, and I would get second place. Like one time I was an eighth grader mm-hmm. and I wrestled with the high schoolers. Uh, they put me in a tournament with the high schoolers. I had, I had won my championship as a middle schooler and I went with the high schools, juniors and seniors, and I got I got fourth place and right. I beat three other high schoolers. I'm, I'm like, oh man, that's pretty good. Okay. And no, that was not good. <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> Why you didn't get first? I'm right. like, well, I'm not old enough. It's better you know? to get third because at least you end with a win, right? That's right. That's you at least end thing. with a win. But yeah. no, uh, they never. we never settled unless it was first. And that's just the way it was, man. So, so let me ask you, taking back to high school, now, you, were you, obviously you're a football player too because I know you went to college to play football. But yes, sir. Well, you know, football, wrestling, was there anything else? Baseball, lacrosse, anything else? Uh, no, sir. Just mainly football and wrestling. I did track one year. Okay. Um, surprisingly, I did the four by one. Yeah. Uh, I was a third leg. But uh, when I mean we we made it to sectionals, but that was it. I bet you were six two, you probably run a lot faster. Yeah, I'm about yeah. to say. <laughs> people always ask me to say, "Do you ever wish you was tall?" I said, "I sometimes think like this. If I was taller, I probably wouldn't have the same worth ethic." That's right. You know, but because me being always the undersized, the underdog, it pushed me to be like, "Okay, go grind." You know, you got to grind harder. And that how tall? Like, how tall are you? Right now. I'm five seven. Five seven. So mm-hmm. fairly short. Yeah. Right. So what position did you play in in, in, in football? I played nose guard. So you nose guard at five seven. I played nose guard. It was so surprising, man. Nobody ever. It ain't surprising because you know what? I, if you haven't noticed, I'm not the tallest guy either in the world. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I run around five nine myself. Mm-hmm. Um, when I wear heels, you know, I get up to five ten. Yeah. But um, <laughs> the truth is, I played nose guard too because uh, I was quick off the ball. I had quick reactions. Same. And I was closest to the ball so I could get through it faster. Mm-hmm. And people don't realize that. They always think the bigger, stronger, fat, you know. But the reality is if you got good reactions, and later I became a you know, linebacker because of that too, because mm-hmm. of the reactions. Um, where'd, they end up, where'd you end up? Did you end up a linebacker as well? Uh, I did my first year in college. I okay. did. And then when we had got a new coaching change, they eventually put me to fullback. Gotcha. So, but see, I was a much better. I've been playing D-line ever since I was young. Mm-hmm. And I had to convince the coach, even in high school, and let me play D-line. I said, you just give me one day at practice. Because they tried to put me in fullback in high school. I said, give me one day. And I tell you, I will for sure be, uh, for sure, if I, it don't work out, you can put me at fullback. Right. It, obviously, it worked out because I made a play. Like I made like 18 straight plays in a row because they wow. couldn't block me. Right. And I was blessed to go. I won defensive player of the year back to back years. Um, I won defensive. I was first team all state back to back year here in Georgia from all classifications. Um, I won defensive player of the year for the middle Georgia. Um, so I, 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 I did a lot of good you made things. A statement, man. You made a statement. I did. I had the sack record as well. I, well, I was half a sack away. The sack record for the state of Georgia is 24. Mm-hmm. I had 23 and a half. So and that obviously led you to uh, you know going to University of Tennessee, right? Yes. Did you play at University of Tennessee as well? Uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, yes, sir. Chattanooga, awesome. And um, I, I, the reason why I went there was mainly so I had got more offers in wrestling. Um, I didn't get many offers in football. Mm-hmm. Wrestling was my pathway, you know. Which sport did you like better? To be honest with you, I, I did like football better. Yeah, I did. Okay. I, now look, wrestling was always in my heart. I, right. I did. So you were a better wrestler, but you like football more. Yeah, I like football. Yeah, more. you know, mm-hmm. I was pretty similar, man. Pretty mm-hmm. similar to that. Yeah. But so, so you you pursued the football mm-hmm. aspect. You didn't wrestle in college, or you did? I wrestled one year in college, but I got injured. My only season is funny. I go through the whole football season wrestling coach. Who? So the only reason why I went to UTC is because they recruited me for wrestling, and the wrestling coach, Heath Nesslinger, he was like. If you really want to do this, if you want to be devoted to this, you need to be 100% in. He's like, because I kept asking. Anywhere I got recruited, I would always ask, can I play football? Can I play football? Mm-hmm. And the moment they say no, I'm like, well, you're out of my mind. You know, but right. um, he, he was like, I'm going to do this. He was the only one that did it. He said, I'm going to help you get on the football team. And he did. Yeah. And the heavyweight. Did you play or were you on the bench? Uh, for football, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was all, I was all conference. Oh, my, uh, oh so you actually made a statement there too. You know, I play fullback. Do you see that, football. viewers? If mm-hmm. you're small, five, seven, doesn't matter. You know, if you work hard, you're determined. You you can make it happen, man. Especially at a position I didn't even like. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really didn't. But um, I, you know, during my it was still freshman year, you know, because of the opportunity gave me the heavyweight for the wrestling team got hurt. Mm-hmm. So what I did. Um, he, he asked me, Jesse said, you don't have to, but if you want to, I said, man, you help me out. And I say, dude, and plus 
why not go and wrestle? So I had to wrestle heavyweight because surprisingly, mm -hmm. I was 250. What? <laughs> I was 250 what? pounds. Oh, I, I got to get some pictures of that, man. Uh, I know. I got some yeah, I didn't see some pictures of that. I can't Dude, imagine too many. See you that You huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. What were you eating? <laughs> what, 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 what did what I eat? <laughs> <laughs> then I ate everything, man. I was, dude, it was, I looked like a house. Yeah. <laughs> it was huge, man. But I feel like because of all that weight that probably had put pressure on my knees, I, I mean, one of my more patent moves is my double leg. My double leg is basically my money maker. Yeah. And I had shot in on a double and the same normal steps I always do. Mm -hmm. And just the step I made, my knee just like popped. And I never forget the feeling. And I still finished the takedown. I tried to rustle on. I thought just something weird happened. And man, I, you know, I had tore my ACL. And it's so funny because literally, the, re the football coach, it was like, you go in another sport, you get hurt in wrestling. He's like, we were just going to get off your scholarship. Mm. So they only made it partial at the time. And, you know, mm. so I you got hurt. And there were just a lot of ups and downs between college. You know, I didn't, I didn't necessarily have the best college career. I, even though I did some good things at fullback, I didn't necessarily have the best college career. Right. Um, then I got hurt again my uh, senior year right before COVID. And as I was recovering, and then that's when – that time of me getting ready to settle and like, okay, um, I, I, you, you get that realism, you know, you get that realistic fact like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to the NFL. Right. Uh, what's next? And gotcha. I just knew in my heart, I wasn't done being an athlete. I, I said, I don't want to, I know, you know, people like they get done with college or they get done with high school and you're working out, you're always training to attain a goal. You're always training for some type of competition. And I could just work out just to work out, but it's not the same, you no, know, no, not that, as a competitor. You know, but you, you got to admit, being a wrestler, mm -hmm. uh, that type of that type of industry, you know, mm -hmm. that one on one, you That's know, right. you know, you're stepping on the mat. You're you have to be real disciplined, man. You do. And a lot of people today don't understand the, the, what that takes. They don't. You clearly showed that. I mean, just the fact that I mean, what, what are you weighing at now? Right now, I'm about like two fifteen. Two. Uh, this morning, I weighed two seventeen. So, gotcha. But would you yeah. would you fight at one eighty five? One eighty five. So to go from two fifty to one eighty five. That's a big feat. I mean, that's 85 yeah, pounds. That's You're five seven. That's, yeah, that's a lot to take off. So that mm -hmm. takes some serious discipline. And obviously, you know, you know, you have that. So mm -hmm. you know, people must have saw that in you. Yes, sir. So you get done with with, with football. You realize, okay, I'm not going to the NFL. Mm -hmm. What's next? Ping pong. I mean, yeah. what we, we decide? You decide. <laughs> I think I want to go get my head beat in. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I started boxing. So I, I was so uh, again I got hurt again and this is when I was like two thirty when I tore my other ACL I had bad but like I said so you tore both ACLs I tore both ACL wow. ACLs I know it's crazy wow that's crazy but I was recovering I was getting bad keep in mind when I say that's crazy it's because I've watched you fight now mm -hmm. you know in, in in the cage and I watch how how you move mm -hmm. and it's amazing that you're doing what you're doing. Yes. So even though you've gone through these injuries, so yeah. that's when I say this man is amazing, you freaking do that. I always work hard <laughs> to get back, man. My first ACL when I toured, especially when they told me like, oh, we, we, we had a scholarship plan for you. I mean, I got back in five and a half months, you know, and that was fast, but I was able to play the full season. That's the season I became all conference, you know, and I was able to play the full season. Then I hurt this one, well, I hurt this one and I had to have uh, ACL and meniscus, um, you know, a little longer right. uh, recovery time, but, in between, you know, it's not obviously not as much pressure on your knees, but I had box in between, and I just started boxing a little bit. Did you like much. it? Um, I did. I did. I had only What did you like about boxing the most? Well, man, I don't know what it is with me, but I like that. I just like that physical contact. So yeah. I, so when, when we spar, I like sparring. Look, I got excited. I got a little know? goosebumps on <laughs> like, that. I like sparring. <laughs> so, like, when you, like, going, when you're competing and you're, like, about to go, it, it's fun. So... You know, I was getting that vibe. And plus, yeah, I remember I was recovering. It took me eight months to get off this one. When you're like eight months, you really ain't got no contact. You got to do all these rehab and in the pool and all You're this angry. Yeah. You're angry. You got yeah. anger yeah. inside of you, man. Sick. You want to let out, right? I know, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. So when I started Is that where boxing, you got the Punisher? Is that where, where your nickname came from? Actually, no. Okay. Punisher came in middle school. Uh -huh. um, I was wrestling in middle school. And the way I pick guys up now in my fights, um, I was doing it with the kids when I was like in seventh grade. Oh, yeah? And it was like, man, you just be punishing those kids. <laughs> and I was sitting there thinking, and I'm a big Marvel fan, and I'm also a big WWE fan. I'm going to be honest with you. So, Who's your favorite WWE wrestler? The Undertaker. Oh, yeah? So this is the thing. So 
as crazy, I know this don't even probably won't even make any sense, but it makes sense to me. So the Undertaker, obviously the ER at the end of the Undertaker. I was like, I want a name like the Undertaker. And then I was a big Marvel fan. I was like, there ain't nobody with the name the Punisher. I'm gonna use the Punisher. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but it because one of the guys like you be punishing people, and I was like punishing, punishing the Punisher, and I was like, oh, just like the Undertaker, and I was like, and that's gonna be, and that's been on my. You can go all the way back to my first. I recorded, I got somebody to record all my matches from 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, mm -hmm. all my wrestling matches. You go all the way back, you'll see one of my 7th grade matches with my name. I'll put the Punisher versus whatever school I'm facing. So oh, yeah. I would say the Punisher versus... Man manifesting that stuff at early age. Yeah, and I never knew that, I ain't gonna lie to you, I never knew that this name would you know, be something that... Stuck with you. Stuck with me like this. So. That's great. So you're boxing, you decided to take on boxing. Now, did you physically compete in boxing? Is I that... competed one time. Okay. So I had only been boxing for three months. I was going to go against another guy. You know how they do, you probably know in the amateur boxing, they try to match you up uh, uh, skill level wise. Okay. So I was going to try to go against, they was trying to put me up against another guy that was had three months of experience. Um, trying to go against the guy, the guy was like 28 years old. I was still like 21, I was 21. And I said, like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And I was still playing football too, but the freaking guy was like, he's on steroids. And I'm like, I'm not on steroids. I was like, I'm playing college football. I can't, I'm not on steroids. You get that a lot, man. Oh, my gosh. Especially after this contender series. All right, tell me fight. the truth. Are you on steroids, man? No. Have you tried them? No. Nothing. Never taken anything. No in my BDs, life. anything. Dude, people, it's so funny. People always think I've taken, I don't even take, pro, like, the protein shakes. I don't like taking nothing. I don't like taking medicine. Uh -huh. I even get, like, flack for it. You need to take, like, some, like, when I get sick, uh, I, don't like to, I don't like to take anything. Mm -hmm. I've, I've just been that way. Yeah. I don't. You're just gen genetically gifted. Yeah, I've just been blessed that there way. Yeah, so, <laughs> a lot of hard work. Yeah, a lot of hard work. A lot of push ups. A lot of push ups. <laughs> a lot of push ups and fried chicken. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> For that. But um, yeah, man. So how did you get into the contender series with the UFC? I mean, how did that all come about? Now I know you had some pro pro fights and stuff. Mm -hmm. You got into the cage. What, what what led you to the cage? Um, so what led me to the cage was the fact that once I got the opportunity after boxing, um, I went straight and like I said, I went to the gym of Gogi. One of the guys at the boxing gym uh told me about a Gogi. I went and tried it out, and I was like, man. You know, this is what I want to do. And, you know, Matt Harris, Sterling Peace, Larry Scott, all those guys there, uh, those are my coaches. Mm -hmm. They were phenomenal, um, you know, really helped me out. Then that's when, you know, after COVID, when COVID hit, I had only trained there once. COVID hit, mm -hmm. and it just stuck with me. I went to uh, spring break with the Panama City Beach. And, you know, that's when we all, everybody learned about COVID and we left the beach and we got home. I had, we was home for like four months and we just didn't know we were going to have a college beach. season. Just stayed at the beach during COVID. Should have, right? <laughs> <laughs> i never forget that. Yeah. It was so funny. And, um, man, I just, every day I was watching videos all on YouTube every day because nobody, nothing was open, couldn't do anything. Right. I would watch videos on YouTube. So I would go outside. So you pretty much self-taught yourself I did. the whole time. I That's did. amazing, man. I was just looking at a lot of videos, man. Lots, it's so crazy because I, you know, I did a podcast, uh, you know, with a couple other athletes people, and, and they said that, you know, this, there's so much out there on YouTube these days. Yeah. There's so many ways to find what you need. In anything. So for somebody to lack the knowledge, it's on them, man. Because mm -hmm. it's out there. It's out there. It's out there. You can learn. Heck, you can learn how to actually cut weight correctly on YouTube. Right. You know, you can learn how to actually throw correct jabs and punches or learn certain techniques about even the most diverse stuff in jiu-jitsu like you can learn in all different aspects so what did you learn first because there's obviously a lot of different forms mm -hmm. you know when you go in a cage there is jiu-jitsu that plays a major obviously wrestling plays a role you know that That's right. there's some you know kickboxing <laughs> involved regular boxing like mm -hmm. where did you start with it all well i mean technically you know obviously with my background in wrestling um the little boxing i did but agogi had a, a mix of both muay thai and jiu-jitsu so me adding my wrestling, because I, you know, I also went to nationals for wrestling, and I was highly recruited as a wrestler, but I chose the football route, and I always had the wrestling, um, but obviously you have to learn jiu-jitsu. You know, that's the hard part for a wrestler mm -hmm. is to be able to understand and be able to. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Right. You, you don't want to. The you, sacrifice. Jiu -jitsu, you jump on your back, but yeah, you don't, you don't be on your back in wrestling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They, my wrestler coach used to say, sleep on your belly. Yeah. If you sleep on your back, you know, you're like, hey, okay. That's why my back, my lower back be hurting sometimes. So I sleep on my belly. But, you know, that's the thing. It's like I've always, um, like I've always just maybe for me, just felt like I knew I could do it. 
Mm. You know, and I had a lot of people tell me that I shouldn't be doing it, especially if you watch that boxing match. I didn't look the best. I lost by decision. The only boxing match I did, it was an amateur boxing match. Mm. But the guy I faced had two years of experience. He had like, uh, he had eight uh, bouts already. Mm -hmm. And I just said yes, because the type of competitor I am, I was like, no, I don't give a crap. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, oh, he got some experience. I said, like, I don't care. I actually won the first round, but, you know, when you're like 240, Mm -hmm. <laughs> fighting it, like a, a more skilled guy who was like he was like more like 220 and he was in much better shape but I blew my load like in like the first 30 seconds you wow. know so I was done wow. and I gassed out but I'm I mean, lost conditioning different type of conditioning oh different type of conditioning yeah. yeah you can't that's why I tell all these other athletes that think they can just walk in and fight I'm like it's not the same I was like that first 30 seconds it's not you, a street fight. It's not a street fight. No. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a street fight, you can go 30 seconds. Yeah. But in a real fight, it's not, you, <laughs> you right. go to gas out. Right. So I was blessed to be able to, you know, eventually I, I transferred on. I was like, you know, when people deal with failure early and something new, it automatically, sometimes it turns them off. Where for me, I was like, I, I took this guy to a decision that was six and two, and I'm like, Okay, you give me two years and see. Let's see what we're going to be. That's the way I was thinking. Right. I went thinking, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's not for you. Because I had a lot of people tell me you shouldn't do that anymore. Right. You think I can get beat? Yeah, because I lost an What did mom fight. think about it? Mom was, she, I'm going to tell you this. She she supported me. She wasn't, she was like, I, I don't want you to get hurt. Don't but want my what, baby to get but hurt. But she did yeah. say this. Whatever you do, I'm going to 100% be behind. Ah, there you and go. She's always, she's always done that for me. And um, I'm very thankful for her. Uh, she she she's been a blessing. Um, her, my dad, and my granddad. You know, my grandma. My my family has been very supportive of me. Yeah. Um, but my mom, uh, for sure. She she was definitely there. You know, when a lot of people didn't think I should have been doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm blessed. So it's COVID now. You're you're you're, you're teaching yourself how to fight. Mm -hmm. You say, you know what? I want to go to UFC. I want to be a UFC fighter. That's something that you decided at that point in time. This is something I really want to do. I'm going to pursue this. Yes, this was something because I had graduated with in uh, two degrees in communication and sports administration. So when I graduated, you know, I had to set up a job back at home in Macon to get ready to go and work. And then to have that conversation with your family, like, um, I'm going to stay here in Chattanooga. I'm going to go work at FedEx when I'm soccer training full time to be an MMA fighter. Where's the money in that? <laughs> you know, it wasn't none. <laughs> but I did have a little belief in myself. I did. I was like, man. A little? You had to have a lot of belief. I did. Well, I you did. I, right. I was very, dude, those early morning going to FedEx, I was thinking every time, just wait. You, you, you're going to be able to do this. Just wait. You know, and I was so calm. I would train every day. Um, never missed a training session. What, what, was, what was your daily routines like? You waking up like Rocky, three in the morning, four in the morning, cracking the eggs, eating them. What were you doing? <laughs> I wasn't doing that. Bro. I didn't eat anything really. But <laughs> two thirty in the morning, I would wake up to go to FedEx. Yeah. I work from two thirty. I'm only working part time, so I work from two thirty to seven thirty. Um, leave, come back, sleep to about eleven, eleven thirty. Get up, go to do jujitsu, noon jujitsu. I basically stay at the gym the whole time up up until six. Um, six do more jiu -jitsu, uh, six do jujitsu, then seven do do striking, and then and then it switches. Then like Tuesdays and Thursdays was a little different than MMA, so the time was different. But the schedule was basically the same every single day. Mm -hmm. And I just stayed, you know, stayed to that schedule, man. And I basically did my whole amateur career. What's your you know? recovery schedule like? Uh, you know, I always well, tell people all the time, you know, especially these younger kids and people that are watching, you know, it's just as import important as preparing for what you're doing, but also recovering. Because, you know, your body has to heal that's right. to get ready for the next day. Yeah, that's you right. know, and that's something that, you know, people don't realize today. You know, they're not taking the time. These kids get off the field, they get off the mat, they get out, out of the ring, and the first thing they wanna do is go eat, go, mm -hmm. go home, relax, chill, watch TV, play a video game, mm -hmm. you know, get on that social media, talk to the friends or whatever. That's right. They're not thinking about, I need to ice down. I need to, you know, I got to take care of my body. I need to get that compression. I need to, you know, I need, I need to get in that sauna I, and I need to get that stuff out, thing. Yeah. you know, type of thing. So did, was that a big portion of what, what you did? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm still learning that part. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, now for, you know, Gannon gets me a lot about sometimes cause I do Gannon. sometimes. Gannon? So Gannon is my uh, strength and conditioning coach. Oh uh, yeah. Gannon for peak kinetic performance who have been a huge and vital part uh, to the growth that I have made uh, in my fighting career, you know, they they have given they have helped given me a lot of the things attributes that I didn't have when I was wrestling in high school. You oh, know, yeah. like the cardio to like, 
you know, helping my explosion factor. You know, just they helped a lot of different things. And um, that's great. Man, I mean, it, ha- having great. great people around you is important, it especially is. in the fight world. It is. You got to have that. So it, it sounds like some couple do- cool dudes. I need, I need to meet them. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, you really. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're they're awesome, man. Look, uh, I used to train. So his brother John was really he's my main he was my main training partner for literally my whole amateur and early pro career. Oh yeah. So he we would just you know. He'll be the guy I have to really go with because he one he's one of the bigger guys in the gym, uh-huh. and then two you know he'd be the only one that really could push me in a lot of areas, and he was more athletic, you know not not take, everybody. Can he take you in a match? <laughs> no, that's a no. Uh, I say, yeah, look, he, he's been out of the game a little bit. So. <laughs> you're, the, you're the new improved. Now? Yeah, I'm a little new improved. So. But but he does a lot of you know he he really did he helped me and he got me in touch with Gannon and them uh, with Pete Kinetic Performance and. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we've been a really good, you know, it's been helpful for, on both sides. You know, they helped me out in a lot of areas and I try to help them in any way I can as well. So, um, it, it's been a blessing, uh, definitely. So you, you start, you start MMA, you decide, okay, I'm going to go ahead and fight mm-hmm. your very first fight. I want to, I want to take you back to that. <sighs> what was that like? And where was that? Tell me about that. So very first fight, October 3rd, 2020. I'll never forget it. We had a scrimmage that day. So this is while I was still putting my first amateur fight, I was still playing football. I was playing football. I was second string, actually, defensive lineman. I had to play 60-plus plays. I'll never forget it. Then Coach got mad how we ended the scrimmage, so he made us run 10 100-yard sprints. And it was funny. My teammates knew I was fighting, but the coaches didn't know. Mm. So they was like, Finney, if you, if you, I know you, you run him. I said, look, we'll vouch for you. Like one of the head guys that was like an All-American, Devontae Maxwell, I'll never forget. He was like, Finney, we'll vouch for you, man. If you, you can walk off, I know you don't need to be doing this before a fight. I said, I, I know, but this is rough. Right. <laughs> but I, I went on, ran the sprints, got done, showered, headed straight to the gym, got in the car with my coach. My coach took me to Knoxville, fought at the Kana Joe, and man, I was like, oh, I was feeling a little tired. I was sleepy. I slept all the way there. And I said, like, okay, I got to get this guy out of there. And literally, I walk in, and I knock him out in 11 seconds. 11 seconds. So, yeah. 11 seconds. It was longer to get in a car. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the fight ended in 11 seconds, and that's not even my shortest fight. My shortest fight is five seconds. Really? Yeah, five Are seconds. Are those even fights? I mean, what would you just throw a haymaker or what? <laughs> no, dude, uh, like – the first one was just throwing a bunch of punches till he dropped. Uh, Some people think it could have been an early finish, but hey, the way he fell made it look like he was out. And then the, now the five second one, <coughs> excuse me, no, bless. Um, uh, the five second one, yeah. yes, that that was an actual, you know, that was <laughs> I front kick him, get him out that of there. Was a kick? Yeah, I front kicked him in the stomach. He bends over, I throw him down, and I just grind a pound his head in, you know. And, that was it. He's out. It's Game out. Good. Yeah, so Game over. I had, like, basically that 16 seconds of fight. That's the reason why, you know, and what, like, what Dana said on the contender series, but, you know, for me to gain more experience. And I'm not, I'm not solely against it because I really haven't – I've only been doing this MMA stuff for three years. And how fast, like, to be on the contender series, like, the guy I fought had been doing MMA for 10 years. Right. So, like – how fast this entire thing has gone for me to be on the contender series in my second year as a professional, you know, it, it's a lot of good upside and I'm young in this game. And well, let's, let's back up real quick because so, a lot of viewers don't even know what the contender series might be. That's right. So let's talk about that real quick. So Dana White, UFC president, mm-hmm. okay. has a contender series where they go around and they're looking for the top people, mm-hmm. right? Because they're looking to offer some UFC contracts. That's right. So looking at pros that go, and when did you find out that you were in the mix? That was funny. We got this on video, too, on my YouTube page. But yeah. what happened was, so I fought in Nashville. What UFC Nashville happened early this year in August. And um, um, right after that show, you know, they was talking about the UFC, my management team, first-round management, uh, my agent, Ray Horner, who's been doing a phenomenal job for me. He, he got me. He was like, look, you got to go in. We got to get a finish, all right? Because they wanted me at 5-0. But I ended that fight by decision. But I fought a really tough guy. I mean, the people got to understand anybody that fights. It's going to be hard to finish other tough opponents. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a fight. A fight's a fight. Right, yeah. So, but they wanted me to get a finish. I got a finish. The next day, literally. What, what was your record at that time? 6-0. Uh, 
So six and zero, oh, never been. Did you ever get knocked out or been mm -hmm. down? I know I've won. At that time, I had won every round I ever fought. So I've never lost a round. Never yet. lost a round at all. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing, amazing. And I had got the call. Did you feel like, hey man, I'm the shit? I'm well, something special. Like this is something for me. Well, I knew this was something for me, but when I got the call, I knew. See, it's different. We was expecting to call at five and zero, oh, didn't get it. Got it at six and zero, oh, and I'm like. I, I I know I'm I'm meant for so this. So who called you? Did Dana call you himself? No, management team called me. He got the call from Mick Maynard. Mick okay. Maynard is one of the matchmakers. You got Sean Shelby and you got Mick Maynard. Uh, they both have their respective weight classes, mm -hmm. and Mick Maynard is one of the matchmakers, for, and he's the matchmaker for my weight class. And uh, called my management team, told him I got the opportunity, and they called me and said, hey, I'll be going against this guy named Yuri Panfarov, and Yuri is a guy that was on a Dana White looking for a fight, So which he – Dana White actually goes to their fights, watch them live with Dean Thomas and, um, gosh, who's the guy that fought George St. Pierre and beat him, upset him? Matt, uh, Matt, Matt uh, not Matt Hughes, the other Matt. It's Matt Sarah. Sarah. Yes. Yeah, Matt Sarah. So, uh, yeah, Matt Sarah and Dean Thomas go with Dana White, their little show on YouTube, and they went to Yuri's fight, watch them fight live. You know, they try to go there to see if they, they can give a UFC contract right after the fight, but mm -hmm. instead they gave him a contender series shot, and that was my opportunity to fight. The guy that they uh, brought in. So what was that like, Ben? Yeah, that had a bit, were you like nervous at all, or were you excited? What was the first feeling? I mean, so this is long story. I gotta, short. I gotta, I gotta imagine it would be a little bit of ball. Man, if it was myself, I think I would be nervous because I don't want to let myself down, you know. But I'd be like, super excited about the opportunity. I was excited for the opportunity, but the matchup. See, I known about Yuri early in the year because I was trying to actually be the one to fight him on the Dana White looking for a fight. In March. Oh, so you knew all about him. I knew all about him. Yes. The problem was. Let they, me ask you real quick. Before you, did you think at that point in time you could take him? Yes. Oh, so you didn't. They only him. wanted to fight at two hundred five, though. He was only fighting at two hundred five. Uh, he never has fought a fight at one eighty five. Gotcha. So, and I'm like, they talked about him eventually moving down. And I was like, okay, well, let's just do the fight at one ninety five then, since you don't want to make the full cut. A little catch weight. And I don't know if necessarily it was him or his management team or whatever. But they didn't want to do that fight at that time. Really? So it is what it is. But man, is it that hard trying to get people to fight you at a certain weight? And oh, I mean, what is that man. like? Oh man, <laughs> you don't even know, dude. I, I there was one instance where we went through fifty fighters before we got a yes. Fifty fighters. 50. You guys actually approached fifty fighters to get a yes. fight. Management team, coaches. and they wouldn't fight you. Nope. Scary. And you should see the money we're offering them too. So it's not right. like it's it's not like the the usual. One and one, or 800, 800, you know, meaning 800 to show 800 win, or 1,000 to show 1,000 to win, is, is up in the four and fives. So they're getting offered a good little bit of purse, but I understand, especially against other prospects, because you got to think about it, we're all trying to get towards the same goal. Right. So some people think, why risk fighting this guy on the regional scenes when I could potentially see this guy on a bigger scene? They look very similar to like a guy like Yuri. Mm -hmm. Why risk? Find this guy in Massachusetts, you know, in, in a hotel right. when I could rather fight this guy on a big scene like ESPN Plus on the Dana White Contender Series. You know, like, right. obviously, we didn't know that at the that time. Makes sense. That makes but, sense. But you, you, have to, you have to also play the game. Right. You know, like, not everybody fight everybody. Like, every fighter is okay fighting everybody, but for the right price. Mm. So, you, you got to... You got to play the game. Not everybody, and you even see it with boxing, you know, even look at Floyd. Floyd just didn't fight anybody. Right. I mean, he fought great guys, but he fought them at the right time when the price was right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's you have to play the game as well. Right. What's up, guys? Monster Michael Todd here, and I'm the Cost Plus Processing, the leader in merchant processing. If you're a business owner and you're still paying processing fees, you have to contact Cost Plus Processing. 1-855-391-9190. That's 1-855-391-9190. Be sure to tell them the Monster sent you to get a free gift. Being on a contender series, now you're on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the fight's scheduled. Where's the fight at? Where, you know, how many rounds? What's it like? Uh, fight was in Las Vegas at UFC Apex. Uh, what was that like, going to Apex? Like, did you feel like, this is what I want? Like, I'm, I made it? I'm here? Well, it was, let me tell you something. It was really cool. It was. And it's still really cool to be able to experience all of that. I told people, for me, it probably don't hit the same as, like, other fight fans. Because I didn't get into fighting until, like, three years ago. Gotcha. Now, it's cool. Still new to you. It's all still new to yes. me. Yeah. Now, if you was like, 
man, you about to go in here, Pittsburgh Steelers locker room. I'm a Steelers fan. You uh-huh. know, you're about to walk out on the field and play football. Now, that, I'll be like, oh, freak. Now, that when my nerves will surely shoot up. But I actually, this is the first fight um, I ever walked in and I wasn't nervous. Yeah. This is the first fight. For some reason, I was so confident. Um, I was just like, I was I was in the moment, man. I, yeah. I, I felt really good going in. The strength and conditioning I did, the training I did. Um, had they a pay few for that? Interesting. They pay you for that? Yes. Uh, How yeah, much did they pay you? Uh, five and five. Five thousand, five thousand. Okay. So you ten thousand dollars. So yeah. ten thousand dollars for the fight, but an opportunity. Yeah, opportunity. To earn, a, earn a contract. Opportunity to earn a contract. You get you know a bunch of eyes from all around the world watching you. So had a little shoot up in social media, you know, publicity sure. and things of that nature. So it helps in a lot of accords, but um, yeah, you know, you know, a lot of people look more for fighters pay to get increased, but you know, it gave me a, gr- a great opportunity. What's it like behind the scenes? Like, you know, knowing that you had to fight, how, how, how long did they give you to prepare 60 days? Well, how, how long was your camp? Um, I actually got one that was a little better than most. So, you know, I have a teammate that fought on contender series and he only got three weeks. I was blessed to be having to have a full eight week camp. Okay. So I had a full eight weeks to prepare, you know, the final season, um, so me and Yuri, you know, you know, we had a full eight weeks to prepare for each other. So it, it was good. It was did you have any media days and stuff like that? Did you guys we have did. Any, any face-offs? What was that like? We did. We did have a uh, – we had to go to the UFC. So they flew you down two weeks, three weeks prior before your fight, and they flew us out. We did full media. Uh, we How did. they treat you in the UFC? They treat you pretty well. Yeah. They do. They treat you They yeah. treat you pretty good. Yeah. You know, they pay for everything, basically. Yeah. Uh, uh, they they – Drive you around. They come, when you get off the plane, they have your name with the UFC plaque on it, like Torres, right. Finney, and stuff. They make you they feel do. good. They do make you feel good. That's good. That's mm-hmm. good. Yeah, Dana's done a great job with that, man. I'm, yeah, oh, he's built I'm, that I'm, thing I'm a big program. fan of, of him and what he's done in his life, what he's done for the UFC, but mm-hmm. more importantly, like, what, he, what he stands for as a person. Mm-hmm. I just think he's phenomenal. You got to meet him. Did you get to talk to him and stuff a little bit? Yes, I got to, I got to uh, say something to him after the fight. Mm-hmm. And then I also got a chance to meet him um, in Abu Dhabi when I went to the UFC 294 card. So uh-huh. uh, it, was, it was pretty cool to meet him, you know, first time. Not, nothing, no long, extensive conversation, just more of, you know, a little short talk. But it was, it was pretty cool to meet him. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. So you're sitting there, you're at the apex, it's, it's go time. And you come out the first round. You, do you already have something calculated in your mind, I'm going to do X, Y, Z? Or is it just oh, what happens happens? Well, no, we I, I'm I'm big about game planning. I've been because of the football player in me. So, um, my one of my football coaches brought film watching, and I've been watching film not only in football. I brought it to wrestling for our school, so I became a big film watcher for wrestling. And then they and I also use that for MMA. So I watch a lot of film. I'm very detailed. I put things down in my notes on my phone. So I, I watch a lot of things, and the goal was to come out. Be first. He does not take strikes really well. All right. He does not respond really well to strikes. Um, I knew, granted, he had never been out of the first round. Plus, he fought up a weight class at 205. So he's never been out of the first round. He fought up a weight class and he smashed everybody he has fought. So I felt like he was a like it's a good thing, but he was a bully, but the bully don't know how to be good when he gets out bullied. So I was gonna be first. He threw a little combination. The moment I picked him up, mm-hmm. I, I picked him up like first 10 seconds. I was like, oh, man, this guy's not going to be You gave him the wham-bam slam. Yeah. You know? yeah. I have that slam in there. That, that was one of my signature moves, that wham-bam slam. Yeah. I was like, oh, the Punisher got a wham-bam slam in there. Yeah, the, wham, the wham-bam slam. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So, well, we gave him one of those early. Yes, you did. And I was like, this guy's not going to beat me. All right, well, and what I, that hit me in my mind. It, it wasn't me being cocky, but it was like, You'll know early in any fight whether or not it's just going to be, man, it's going to be a rough one, or if I do what I'm supposed to do, I should handle, handle this one pretty well. And early on, I, once I grabbed him, I said to myself, I said, this guy can't beat me. I said, all I got to do is get the mount or get to his back. I will finish this fight. Mm-hmm. And this So was, you knew at that point in time that was your game plan then. Yes. So you're like, hey, I'm gonna, I got to get to his back. I got to, I can mount him. It wasn't, I'm gonna strike him out. It wasn't, I'm gonna knock him out. Mm-hmm. It was, hey, I'm gonna choke him out. I'm gonna get the, behind him and finish him that way. The way I came out in the second is how I was supposed to came out in the first. I was supposed to throw strikes early on. The problem is, like I said, the moment I grabbed him, I forced the situation that necessarily didn't need to be forced. That that comes a part of me continuing to learn. That's the experience factor. Sure. You know, I'm at the moment. Well, I just turned 25 last week, but. I, 
24 Happy years birthday, old. Man. Thank Happy you very birthday. much, brother. Happy, yeah. and, and winning, just so you know, folks, yes, he won that fight yes, sir. in the Contender Series. Yes, so sir. winning the Contender Series, it, I mean, that's huge that's at huge. 25. You know what I'm saying? It does. And, and, and more importantly is how you're taking it because I know the news afterwards, and you know, I want to get into that um, you know, as well. Uh, the, the way the Contender Series works, Dana White gives out UFC contracts. Mm -hmm. That year he gave out like some of the most, right? Mm -hmm. He gave like 46, I think, that yes, year. Yes, sir, this year. This year. And um, unfortunately, winning, he didn't offer you one. Mm -hmm. What was that like, man? Well, you know? you know, most of the time, you know, they I've, I've seen a percentage where they say 90% of the time, if you win and get a finish, you get a contract from Dana. Mm -hmm. And... You know, going in the back, especially how the fight went, you know, for a lot of the viewers that hadn't seen the fight. The first fight, the first round was a little iffy. It was. I, I, I made a few mistakes, you know, then strike out of the clinch and just let him get going a little bit. But coming out of that second round, I made adjustments, which Dana talks about. He loves when seeing fighters be able to face adversity and come back, which I was able to do. Um, then I come back, you know, strike early, get the takedown, get a rear naked choke. And... Over. Um, it was over. It was over. It was and over. And I, you know, I thought I hit a good promo on the vid. You know, every, it's funny. Everybody that was in the back, a bunch of the UFC personnel, they said, oh, yeah, you got that kind You know, I was just curious. Like, y'all wow. think it was good if I was good? And it was like, oh, you got that contract. Everybody was like, I don't I don't see you not getting it. And I, I was pretty confident I was going to get it, to be honest with you. I, was, I thought, man, like, you got to finish a naked choke against the guy that they actually thought brought in to win, you know? Like, right, right. You know, you think you get a chance, but. You know, hearing what Dana said, you know, it makes sense, you know. Dana's a tough, I mean, when he comes to that, I, I mean, I just know from watching him, obviously a big UFC fan and, and mm -hmm. follow, follow quite a bit, but, uh, you know, knowing he likes a physical fight. He mm -hmm. likes to know that his people are going to freaking stand in the middle ring, go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but that's mm -hmm. what it takes, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that, you know, what, what you started out as, like you said, you're still young, you're still learning, mm -hmm. but you did what you know. You that's know right. best. You wrestle. That's right. And, you know, you wrestled him more than you fought him. And I think mm -hmm. that's probably the what deteriorated that. Unfortunately, you know, you got a lot more in your tank. <laughs> yeah, but see, but see, this is the way I, and I look at it a little bit as well. You know, they talk about, per se, striking and wrestling in, in that regards. But we, we see who the champions are currently right now. And we see who the ones that are dominating a majority of the sport. Oh, yeah. You wrestling. know, these guys are taking these. I mean, heck, you know, we're looking at a lot of these Dagestani res Russians. Mm -hmm. They're going in, taking these guys down and smashing them. Some of them barely throwing a strike on the feet at all. You're right. You know, so. But I think because of me going to be able to adjust, there's some some things. That I, I, I will say this. For me to have the worst round, probably uh, that was the worst, the worst round of my entire career, it would be the first round of the contender series, but then to turn around and I feel like I had the best round I ever had in my career mm -hmm. in that second round. Right. You know, so like. Oh, yeah, you get your win, you get your hand you know, up, the yes. second round, you, you finish a, a worthy opponent. That's right. You know, and, and you so, know. because he did win up until then. And That's right. He, he had never lost as an amateur or pro as well. Yeah. You know, so and to have that, and like I said, I, don't, I didn't take that criticism at all to be bad. You know, because I, the way I felt, I was like, okay, well, fine, no problem. Because you got to, like my management team said. You weren't pissed at off? Not, a, not one bit. You weren't pissed at all? Mm -mm. For real? I tell people that. No, I wasn't. See, because, that, that's awesome. Because I, mean, that's awesome I, I, gonna... I tell people, I would have been pissed if I would have lost. Yeah. But I won the fight. Yes, you did. So because I, because I won the fight, and not only that, and I finished them, you know, and I, it, it's only more, more, more of a thing in my pocket mm -hmm. because now I'm 7-0. I'm still one of the highest rated prospects in the country. And how many, you know, one or two fights on the regional scenes, if that, you know, and plus, you know, I'm not going to say it right now, but there's been some opportunities that's been provided for me. Sure. Uh, other fight promotions. So, you know, but could look, look at some things that way. But still, you know, one or two more on the regional scenes. How many nine and no prospects you know out there, or right. you know ten and no prospects out there that you know that on the regional scene? So like, does it drive you a little more? Yeah, it does. Does it? Oh, it does. You know, you like wake up a little this, more. See, this is the funny thing. This ain't the first time, you know, I've been doubted. I've been doubted ever since I was young. You know, when they said I was too short to play nose guard, I've been yeah. doubted ever since they said I was too small to play college football, especially at a Division One school. You know, I've been doubted when everybody said I should never fight MMA. Mm. So. This ain't nothing new to me. That's right. why I don't respond to it that way, you know, because I'm only going to work harder and I'm going to grind harder. So 
I think about it like this. Anybody you put in front of me, I'm going to continue to beat. If I beat everybody, no matter, like, I'm going to continue to get better. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, it's not like, oh, I'm not going to change my style at all. Because of that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue to get better yeah. in the striking area, in my grappling area. I'm going to continue to get better in all aspects. But I'm going to beat guys continually and whoever they put in front of me. And if I just keep winning, you can't keep denying me. Will you fight anybody? Huh? Yes. So you don't care? No, I really There's not a certain type, not a certain thing? Uh-uh, because I fought, so everybody thought this guy was a better grappler than me. They knew I was a better wrestler, but they thought this guy was a better grappler than me once I got on the mat. It's funny, Big Maynard was talking to my management team, was like, uh, what are what are my grappling accolades? And he, to be honest, I mean, yes, you can talk about my wrestling, my state championships, but besides that, I'm a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, but besides that, I mean, I ain't got no crazy grappling accolades like he did he had all this ibjjf naga and all this grappling stuff for jiu-jitsu and i'm like i'm just as good as him as jiu-jitsu it's just i don't compete a lot in jiu-jitsu because i'm only mma more focused mm. so i could now i am going to be competing i'm competing in the worlds this year in vegas ibjjf oh, yeah? worlds for when jiu -jitsu. is that uh december 7th through the 9th december 7th and the 9th i gotta put that on my schedule yes sir so. i gotta be down there that'd be that'd be awesome yes man. sir yes so. So it's a tournament so i'm going to compete in it and uh you know give my shot at the jiu-jitsu world a little bit but it's just only going to allow me to continue to keep getting better you right. know and like i said i prove a lot of people wrong in a lot of areas you know a lot of people in all of my seven fights they still don't even know They've only seen 25% of what I can really do. People really don't know my full game yet. You mm. know, I, I'm much more versatile than what I've shown. But if you can't stop playing A, now I'm not going to go to B and C and D. Don't have to. They don't have to. Right. You know, I don't, I'm not a guy that likes to put everything at risk just to entertain. Right. Now, I understand that's the business I am, I, I am in, but I am a guy that likes to win. Mm. And winning trumps everything for me right you know if i'm winning i don't care if you hate it you like it or not but you're going to remember what we already know this we don't some people don't ever remember who loses the super bowl they remember who won regret mm. no matter how bad it was that's right so heck everybody remembers the name trent dilfer when we know how good of a he wasn't that great of a quarterback but because he won on the winning team granted he wasn't the, even the biggest nowhere close to being the biggest factor mm. but he won right you know so now, granted, I don't always think that way, but I always think about winning. And if I can find a way to continue to keep winning and continue to get these, you know, it's hard winning fights. I tell people this. Like, winning. Well, it sounds like it's hard to get a fight. I mean, that, that, you that. know, <laughs> I mean, especially now. I mean, you've been on a big stage, you won. No, no, no. You know, you, we don't even know what's going to happen now. You know what? Yeah, but, but, you know, I got to be honest. There's two ways to look at that because I, if I was in the fight world, I actually kind of want to fight you mm -hmm. because I want the opportunity to knock you off. That's right. Right? You know, that, that would be the, the ideal thing. This guy's undefeated. He was on the contender. He won, he, he won the contender. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's, he's one of the, the top, you know, recruiting person in the world to get that UFC contract. Mm -hmm. Let me see what I can do against him. That's right. And if I lose, well, shit, he's good. So mm -hmm. you're okay with it. You know what I yeah, mean? That's right. So them people are dangerous. That can be dangerous too, Those are the dangerous people. Yeah. You know, them the ones that you have to, the ones that have, uh, not necessarily no purpose, but... Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Everything to gain. Mm -hmm. Everything yep. to gain. Yeah, so them are the hardest ones to fight. That's why I say it's hard to fight. You know, like, winning fights aren't easy. No, <laughs> like, I, I those tell fights. people that. I know, like, all these fights I've won up, like, uh, yeah, you know, some of your early fights, you get a few give me's, whatever that. I mean, yeah, like, you're going to probably beat that guy. But, like, then it gets into the middle part. Like, I fought a guy... From AKA, you know, American Kickboxing yeah, Academy. Yeah. He trained with DC. He was Luke Rockhold's main training partner, Ivan Batnish. He trained with Habib and all those guys. Mm -hmm. So his style was emulating my style, you know, and I had to go out there and out, out style him, you know. Right. So, <laughs> you know, like I fought him, then fought Crump, who's a highly decorated jiu jitsu man, and um, they didn't fight Yuri, you know. So, like, winning these fights aren't easy, right. you know. So you have to continue to keep getting better um, while you also trying to learn the ropes. That's why I said, like, I've been blessed to be able to only be a pro for two years. I've been doing it for three, been a professional for two years. And at the age of 25, I've done mo more than what most regional guys will ever wish to do. Right. You know, and, and I don't look at it that way, but I look at it like I got to continue to keep getting better. But I don't also it's like, man, well, this is all for nothing. No, right. we just got to keep getting better because you don't hit your prime in MMA from 28 to 32. They said the back end of your prime when you hit 32. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got three more years, so I hit 28. Get, getting started. <laughs> yeah, we just, just getting, getting started. started. We talk about a 10-year plan. What's your, weak, what's your weakest point of your game? 
Uh, I would say my weakest point. Let me be honest with you. Um, I would say my striking. I don't want you to lie to me. I'm going to say my striking. <laughs> striking. But I think my striking is underrated because yeah. maybe, one, I don't show it enough in my fights. And two, ask anybody I spar with. I spar with some highly, really, really good guys. You know, mm -hmm. I've even sparred with the champion, Sean Strickland. You mm -hmm. know, I've trained with Chris Curtis, some of the guys at Fusion, Rodolfo Vieira, um, Phil Rowe. You know, I, I've, I've went What's with Sean them. think of you? Did you ever get rocked Sh by him? Uh, I, now I've had, yeah. I've had two, I've, I've only sparred with Sean two rounds. You know, like they say, you got to Did anybody rock you for that matter? No, he didn't rock me, but he put a pace on me. I'll tell you that much. He put a pace on me. Okay. You know, he, he, he that one thing that about that joke, he, don't, he does not get tired. <laughs> he can spar all day. So yeah. th those were fun rounds. Um, but, you know, you learn from him. You learn from him. Right. And I did some good things, you know, in the, the first time we, we sparred. But the second time we sparred, he made a huge adjustment. But it, it was good. You know, it was good because I learned. Is it harder to fight? And uh, I shouldn't say fight. Should, is it harder to spar? with amateurs versus professionals? Um, is it a different level because professionals kind of know it's for training purposes where amateurs are trying to make a mark? You know, you know what's type funny? Of thing? That is true. I'm it's, curious. It's, so you are more at risk with an amateur than a pro, right. <laughs> which is crazy. But it's like, depending on the pro, I mean, yeah, obviously it's going to be harder to spot a pro, but you're more at risk with an amateur because they do the most – unorthodox type stuff you're like bro what are you doing <laughs> right. you know and then like they click your knee and you hurt yourself your ankle like you're like bro like, what are you doing but you know you learn from that stuff and you're like okay but most amateurs you know i'm able to like control them and do what i want you know most of them don't really go too haywire because if they go too haywire i'm like okay you want to turn it up i'm about to show you and, you know, that, that lesson gets taught pretty quickly. So, <laughs> you, Well, making a name for yourself, too, has got to help you as well. Like some of these other people that are fighting and have pro fight cards coming up, mm -hmm. they were, you know, they could reach out to you and come into my camp. I need you to, you know, help me, you know, work out as one of my spar partners. I, just had, that, I just had that happen. Uh, so one of the guys is going to be fighting. He's making his pro debut. He helped me out for my camp. He was the same exact size, very similar style uh, from Nashville and um, – he came and helped me out a little bit for Yuri, mm. and I told him anything I can do for you, and you know I won my fight and everything. He's like, man, can you help me? So I told him, yeah, I'm down. I hope that's you. Great. That's great. So, Pay it back, baby. You know, yeah, that's right. That's so we, right. we, you know, you help each other, especially in the regional scene. I feel like people in the South don't get enough respect, especially in MMA, which is shocking. You know, I feel like we have the best athletes over here, mm. and uh, we don't get enough respect for it. But granted, our best athletes are playing football and basketball and other sports uh, that they would like to venture in, but. I feel like we got some dogs over here in MMA, you right. know, especially in the Georgia, Alabama, Florida area. Now, well, they like Florida, but we don't we really don't count Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Florida is like its own. But I know it's the South, but it's like, like it's the own thing. But some of us like Georgia, Alabama, Kentucky, South Carolina, North Carolina, man, Tennessee. Don't forget about my New York City, baby. You know, New York's got some good, some good people. Yeah, up but that's north. not the South. Come on, I know that's what I'm saying. You can't oh. leave out. You can't leave out the goat, the greatest Ooh. man of ever. Ooh. Mr. John Jones came from New York. Yeah, well, well, no, 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 no. I'm talking about like how they disrespect the South. Oh, MMA. gotcha. Yes. But, uh, but I, oh, I'm t oh, I know they definitely go to New York. <laughs> yeah, they get a lot of guys from New York. Yes. But I'm talking about like that. You don't really see a lot of guys in the South in MMA, in some of the bigger promotions, you know, in like UFC, Bellator, PFL, you really don't. they all from all over the world, from other countries, up north, out west, and I don't know why just like the southern thing just isn't prominent for some reason in MMA, but you sounds know. Like, sounds like they're looking for somebody like you to take over. That's one of my main goals, man. I want to, you know, me and my teammate Trevor Peak, man, we, we're trying to be those guys that like, hey man, we're going to show like, hey, the South got some fighters, dude. Right. Like, we country bread, we cornbread fed down here, man. Like, <laughs> what's it? What's it like off the scenes? Like, you know, fighters. You know, you're fighting. You're fighting each other. You're beating each other up. You're trying to. You know, there's a lot of egos. Obviously, there's a there's, yes. there's, there's a lot of people size you up. They wanna, you know, oh, I could beat him. I could take him. So, what 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 is that like? Or or is it more of a camaraderie type thing? Is a level of respect? Because obviously, you see a lot of fighters after the fight. You're always hugging, mm -hmm. respecting each other and stuff. But is is that real or is that Nah, man, this guy, I don't like this guy. It, it's real. Um, yeah. One of my old coaches, uh, uh, his name Rocky, he's like, the nicest people you ever meet is a fighter, which is wild. 
You know, like fighters, you literally do not see fighters just having beef all the time. I think the thing you see on TV is mainly uh, to hype up, get paid more money, just just for publicity. Um, that that stuff, a lot of that stuff isn't real. Some of it is, but half of that stuff isn't real, man. A lot of these fighters are like real cool with each other. You go spar with any of them, you know, they're cool. They talk to you like you just you don't really see too many fighters act like dicks. You really don't. You have your few. Don't get me wrong. Sure, of course. but it, it, it's not a common thing. I, I think it's like a, a eighty twenty ratio to be honest with you. Yeah. So you know, you heck, as much as Sean Strickland talks as you see on TV, um, he's talking way more now that he's won, <laughs> oh, right? You know, he is, yeah, he's yeah. Now, now he's all over. He's a champion. <laughs> he's talking way more than he talked yeah. before. <laughs> uh, but in person, man, he's a really good guy. He yeah. really is. He's yeah. a really good guy in person. You know, it's funny when I had to go get my medicals when I went to Vegas. Uh, me and Sean, said, Sean was literally he had just got it was the week after he fought Izzy that had him in the, at the same uh, hospital yeah. that I had to go get my medicals for the UFC. At, and we were just sitting here, like me and you, we were just sitting there talking. You know, mm. we talked for about an hour. I don't know why they had us in that waiting room for an hour each right. other, but we sat there and waited with each other for an hour and just talked the whole time, you know. And obviously, we had already sparred previously multiple times beforehand. Sure. But, but he's he's a really cool guy, man. And that's how most fighters are. That's how most fighters are. They're all just really good, genuine guys. Now, a lot of them fighters do have switches. <laughs> well, you have to listen. They Any got fighters switches. got a switch. That's right. Any fighters got a switch. I mean, you're you're in a combat sport. That's right. You know, and you know, what a lot of people don't know and and, and viewers, if you know, you're you're watching stuff, that tapping, that means you just killed me. That means I'm dead. That's right. I give up, you know what I'm saying? You I would have died if we were really a combat, that's right? right? I mean, that's what that that's ultimately what that means. That's right. There would have um, been no there's no referee to stop it. That's, that's right. right. So mm-hmm. you're you're literally fighting for your life. So it's the yeah, universal you gotta sign. flip a switch. That's right. It's the yeah. universal sign. It's funny how tapping is like the universal sign to like you see it on football. What do they do? Yeah. Tap the helmet. That's right. You know, that's the universal sign. Hey, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, you know, white flag. Yeah, that's right. I'm that's done. Right. Tap it out. That's right. That's yeah. hundred percent. Right. So where does, I mean, I, I got to ask you first, after your fight, you said some cool, crazy stuff. What was it that you say? You got a little chant. You got a little something that you, that you throw out there to everybody. What, what is it? So after every fight, I do, if you can smell what Therese is cooking. Granted, Is that I, from The Rock? That is from The Rock. Okay. So again, I'm a huge WWE fan, and I used to do that a lot when I was in high school. I, now, I wouldn't do it after an event. I would just do it at football practice. Like, if you can smell, you know. I would no, just, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Go on. <laughs> Come on, man. Let me, let me hear it. Because I, mean, I was trying to make it out after the fight. Let me hear it. All that. right. So I do it. Like, so I'd be like, if you can smell what Therese is cooking. And then, you know, like everybody, uh, you know, say it. It was funny to actually, the contender series, I had to actually good few people say it with me. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty, it pretty, pretty fun. You know, now people that come to fights, they know I say it after my fight. So, yeah. Um, it's a usual thing I do. So, <laughs> until, hey, until The Rock says something, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, <laughs> what if he reaches out to you and be like, hey, man, that's pretty cool. Hey, hey, yeah, I, mean, I mean, you are undefeated. So, I don't think he'd be too upset. Yeah, that's I mean, true. I mean, one thing if you're, you know, 0 and 9, he'd yeah, be like, stop <laughs> using my stuff, man. Yeah, I agree. You know, because you're winning you're we'll give you a pass that's right that makes sense yeah, so he's, <laughs> and it was funny to have it was fun after the fight i had kane you know the wwe wrestler uh, glenn jacobs the mayor of knoxville he sent yeah. me a video you know congratulating me so yeah. uh that was pretty cool you know just been some got some good messages you know um in my dms you know from a lot of people all over the world you know congratulating yeah. me a lot of people's like man i wish you would have got that country you should have got it you know a lot of people thought i, I agree man should have i agree it, i'm not i'm not gonna you know i watched the fight Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, and I was, I was actually quite impressed. I was mm-hmm. quite impressed how you compose yourself coming out to the ground. I knew the first round was flat, mm-hmm. but you know what? I kind of expected that just because you're on a big stage, man. Yeah. You're on a big stage. It's the first time. And, and, you know, being six and oh, and being on the first, you know, you got a big stage, you got a name that's already been on a big stage mm-hmm. because he was already on TV with the other series. That that's has, right. He uh, was trying to pick, was it picking a fight or whatever? Uh, looking for a looking fight, for a fight mm-hmm. you know, with Dana White and stuff. So he kind of was already had a little bit, you know, of that experience in him. Mm-hmm. Um, it's your first gig, man. It's your it it's your first tryout, right? Yeah, it was. And, mm-hmm. and you freaking won. That's and right. not only did you won, you, you took him out. Like, yeah. he, you killed him. He tapped out. Boom. See, that's done. the thing. I <laughs> I understand if it would have been a decision, how it would have been, you know, would have went. And uh, I would have understood. You know, I'm like, okay, you won by decision. It probably wouldn't have been as uh, another round of all of this. But that second round, I came out hard. 
you know, got the finish, got a big slam, took his back, rear neck and choked him. Yeah. You know, I can obviously I'm showing that I got the finishing capabilities and, you know, in, in multiple different ways because every finish I had up to that point had all been by KO knockout, mainly ground and pound, you know, so then I can show I got submission skills, so I show that I'm versatile. Mm. And then not only that, I've submitted the submission guy, the guy that was supposed to submit me, you know? Right, so right. it was great. funny, I saw the bed nods, like for me to win by submission was like plus 6,000. Mm. So, you know, <laughs> like- Put your money in Vegas on this guy. <laughs> What's next? What's next for you? Um, you know, that's the thing we talk with a management team. Like I said, I, I, I had some opportunities. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I've not turned them down. Um, we're just waiting to things, you know, play out to see how things play. And then also looking um, at some, we're really like venturing out in like everything. So we're also looking for the one to two more regional fights to see so we can get back to that opportunity. Um, and you know what? I'm going to pick a fight right now. I'm going to pick a fight right now. I want you to look in your camera. I want you to look at Dana White. I want you to tell, what would you tell Dana White right now? What you, what, what, what you want? Tell Dana White, because I think he missed out a great opportunity. I, I do. I think they, I think Dana missed out on a guy that he can really sell with his promotion on. Um, but I don't think he fully missed out because I think he he saw he sees potential. I think in, in, in due time, you know, I, I feel like he's going to eventually make the right decision. You know, and it, like I said, it's not a rush, but I, I do I do well. I don't believe I know. There are some guys that's in that middleweight division that I know I can beat. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not a shocker. There's some guys right now that you can match me up with, and I like my chances 1,000%. So um, what about the Ultimate Fire show? Well, that de that's dependent uh, year to year on right. what weight classes sure. they do. So it depends. on. Well, now, you get the call for that. Would you go? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like the Ultimate Fighter stuff. Yeah. You know, that's just – because, for one, you fight all those fights, and they don't count on your record. They're all exhibitions. Yeah, it's for an opportunity, but, like, you know, I, if I'm going to fight, I want it to count. You know, and I want to get, like, paid for each fight, you know. So I, I, I would never – I don't really – that wouldn't be my go-to. Like, I want to get in the fight See, scene I think that would be a problem because fighters fight, and you fight no matter what. Mm -hmm. And that's what Dana's looking for. He's looking for the, I give you the opportunity, stage, whatever. You're going to go in there, you're going to bang. You're going to bleed. You're going to cry. You're going to freaking fight. You're going to you're gonna, you know, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get to the top. That's and right. that's kind of what he's looking for. That's so, right. But, so. but see, I'm going to see, so this is the thing. You, you say that, and he looks for that. Granted, yes. But then there's a lot of guys that has gotten opportunities that don't even come close to doing that. Granted, his champion, Sean O'Malley denied multiple, multiple top 10 matchups. He has only, out of his last, besides the champion, granted, he's on, there's only one guy that is still in the UFC that he has fought on his path to the champion. Mm -hmm. One guy. Yeah. That's Peter Young. He didn't, beat, he didn't beat Marlon Vera. He didn't beat Pedro Munoz that ended in a no contest. And he fights one guy, then he gets a title shot. All the other guys, he said, I'm not going to fight anybody ranked until I get paid more money. And his name got built off off that because of the star capabilities. Mm. So I do sometimes feel like certain guys get treatments more better than others. But I mean, at the end of the day, it is entertainment, right? It, it, exactly. You, people are paying exactly. to watch it. Exactly. You know, unfortunately, you know, you're the athletes, the athletes that are inside risking mm -hmm. your lives. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Getting banged up and, you know, uh, you know, taking these shots and these punches. But at the end of the day, if people aren't watching it and people aren't entertained, it doesn't matter. That's right. So you're right. You, know, you're you, right do gotta, you do have to have to get that. Do you ever think about that as far as promoting yourself and what you do? Because you seem real humble, man. You stay real, and I love it. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna, you know, I could just tell you're just a genuine dude, and I can get behind that, yes, 100. percent But you ever say, you know what? I'm gonna stay true to who I am. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep getting better, and that's what I'm gonna be. Or eh, somebody tells you, hey, you know, you might need to pick a fight, or you might need to say a few things, you know, to promote yourself a little bit higher. Do you feel like that could be a way that could get you there a little bit quicker? Well, see, that's the that's the that's the thing. Because I've actually been already. Some people have asked me about doing stuff like that. You know, outgoing. You know, basically like what Kobe Covington did to change his career. Um, no, I, I'm not going to change who I am on, for anybody. Uh, because, like I said, I actually like how Habib did it. In, in my honest opinion, you know. He just kept fighting, mm -hmm. and they tried to put a lot of guys in front of him to knock him off, to be honest with you, because he got a lot of hard matchups early for no God-given reason. What? 
other people were getting like a little softer matchup and getting title shots. And he that's why he was mad. He's like, y'all giving all these guys title shots. Where's mine? I'm beating these guys. I'm not even losing rounds. You know, I'm I'm easily beating guys. And then it got to the point he kept beating all of them till it was undeniable. Mm. And that's the point. I want to get to the point where it's undeniable. And however long that may take, you know, that could take a very long time. I feel like it, it won't because I am a little promotable. Um, because, you know, I mean, I understand the game. You know, people look at my physique. You know, people understand, like, how I speak on the mic when I do my promos. Mm -hmm. My style, you know, very WWE-esque. People compare me to a lot of WWE guys. You know, you know, you don't see guys my height. It's just different, you know. Guys my height, long arms, picking guys up, slamming them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a different style. But I think that can definitely attract. You know, you put me in a stadium with a bunch of people and you see me pick somebody up over my head, slamming them, you know, that can definitely rile up a crowd. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I understand the entertainment aspect. But then again, I'm all about winning, you right. know. So I, I, I understand what the business is a part of. I do, I 100 percent do. But for me, purposely, like, if I don't win, I can go out there and have a fight of the night, fifty thousand dollar night. I don't give two crap about that fifty thousand dollars fight and win, you know. So that's how I feel. If I don't win, I, I lose it, you know. So that's that's just how I've always been because it was instilled in me early on, you know. Yeah, winning. Well, winning. I like that. Winning is so. important. Mm -hmm. um, doing the I can'ts is mm -hmm. important. That's right. You know, it, it doesn't mean I can't. It just means I got to work harder. That's right. And, um, you know, you definitely have been, uh, you know, a model for that. You know, tell the viewers, any young people out there watching that want to be an MMA fighter, what's the first thing they should do? What, what's the best thing they can do to help them get to their paths and, and, and potentially get to a point where you are in your life? Well, you got to stay dedicated and stay true. You know, you can't. You can't jump in this game and be half halfway in, halfway out. You know, a lot of people like to straddle the fence when they start MMA, which is understandable. You know, you, look, you don't make no money early on. You gotta, you got to probably work a job. You know, I've been blessed to have really good sponsors and people to help me out. You know, the gym has helped me out tremendously mm -hmm. uh, to allow me to be able to do. I've been doing this thing full time for three years. You know, granted, I've been only doing it for three years and. I've been doing it for basically full time for three years and they've helped me out tremendously. And, you know, I know a lot of people don't get that backing. I know about the actual full MMA fighter lifestyle. It's, it's, it's rough, you mm -hmm. know. So to have the backing I have, I'm blessed in that, in that aspect. But you have to be fully committed because I say this for myself. Any time I fight, especially on the regional scene, any time I fight anybody, if you got a job, you can't beat me. You know, and I and I'm a big research guy. I saw you. He he works at Home Depot in between when he fights. I was like, well, he's not gonna be able to beat me. And I, I don't say that like, oh, cockily or you know, just like, oh, well, you ain't gonna beat me because you got a job. I say that because while you working, I'm training, and while you training, I'm training. So I'm getting that that time in even when you're not. You know, because this is the only thing that I do. I'm always 100% focused on you. You could be thinking about me, but I'm sitting there watching film, working on things in private, or so working on things individually, just directly for you at all times the entire 24 hours of the day is only focused on you for them eight weeks and the same way that i do for anybody i'm gonna always just like stay focused on my goal and stay focused and stay true to what i do and um i just you know just when 100 i'm 100 committed man I, like i said we got a 10-year plan we just talked about uh, me and my coaches and my management team 10 years 10 years to 35. To 35, you know, this is where we start. We're starting right now. I know I'm 7 to no, highly rated prospect, but we're starting right now. 25 to 35, we've got 10 years to make some shake. And I, I think we're going to definitely we're gonna shake up the MMA world a little bit. So That's it, man. Well, you know, I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction. Not only do you get into the UFC, but actually you do become a champion. Okay, I just really feel that. I can just feel your vibe. I can feel the aura. To the viewers out there, I think we're seeing the future champion in the UFC one day. And I'm excited about watching your ride. Thanks so much for sharing with us today. For all the viewers out there, there you have it. You know what? Commitment. Be committed to anything that you do. As you know, and I always say, if your life was a movie, would it be worth watching? And if the answer is no, then stop being ordinary and start being extraordinary. Remember, stay positive, baby, and keep testing negative. This is your boy Wham Bam. Till next Wednesday, I'm out.
Come on now. Maybe you're good. Call 1-855-391-9190 and find out why they are the future emergent services.